Hello students, I am Dr. Neela Mahajan. I shall be discussing pharmaceutical aerosols part 2 manufacturing today. In this module, we will learn the requirements for manufacturing pharmaceutical aerosols, apparatus for filling pharmaceutical aerosols, manufacturing procedure of pharmaceutical aerosols and quality control of pharmaceutical aerosols. Requirements for the preparation and packaging of pharmaceutical aerosols include special knowledge, skills and equipment, strict supervision and adherence to rigid quality controls, modification of the quality control system to account for the fact that part of the manufacturing operation is carried out during the packaging operation, the equipment used for compounding of liquid suspensions, emulsions, creams and ointments. And last but not the least, specialized equipment capable of handling and packaging materials at relatively low temperatures or under high pressure. First of all, we will discuss the filling apparatus of pharmaceutical aerosols. There are three types of filling apparatus which include pressure filling apparatus, cold filling apparatus and compressed gas filling apparatus. Now talking about pressure filling apparatus first. Pressure filling apparatus comprises of a pressure burette which meters small volumes of liquefied gas under pressure into an aerosol container. Pressure filling equipment that fills through pressure fillable metered valves is available. Pressure filling method comprises of various steps involving the addition of the propellant through the inlet valve located at the bottom or top of the burette. Trapped air is allowed to escape through the upper valve. The desired amount of propellant is allowed to flow through the aerosol valve into the container under its own vapor pressure. When the pressure is equalized between the burette and the container, the propellant stops flowing. To help in adding additional propellant, a hose leading to a cylinder of nitrogen or compressed air is attached to the upper valve and the added nitrogen pressure causes the propellant to flow or a piston arrangement is made so that a positive pressure is always maintained. Now talking about cold filling apparatus, it comprises of an insulated box fitted with copper tubing that has been coiled to increase the area exposed to cooling. The unit must be filled with dry ice or acetone prior to use. This system can be used with metered valves as well as with non-metered valves. However, it should not be used to fill hydrocarbon aerosols because an excessive amount of propellant escaping and vaporizing may lead to the formation of an explosive mixture. Fluorocarbon vapors do not form explosive or inflammable mixtures. Now the compressed gas filling apparatus. Compressed gases can be handled easily in the laboratory without the use of elaborate equipment. Since the compressed gases are under high pressure, a pressure reducing valve is required. A flexible hose is attached to the delivery gauze and is capable of withstanding about 150 pounds per square inch gauze pressure and is fitted with a filling head. More elaborate units utilize a flow indicator between the gauze and the flexible hose. Working off the equipment for filling aerosols with compressed gases involves various steps including the placement of the concentrate in the container, the crimping of the valve in place, evacuation of the air by means of a vacuum pump, insertion of the filling head into the valve opening and the depression of the valve so that the gas is allowed to flow into the container. When the pressure within the container is equal to the delivery pressure, gas stops flowing. Then the container is shaken manually during and after the filling operation with mechanical shakers to obtain maximum solubility of the gas in the product. For products requiring an increased amount of gas or for those in which solubility of the gas in the product is necessary, carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide can be used. After having discussed the various filling apparatus used for pharmaceutical aerosols, now it is a turn to discuss the large scale equipment used for the manufacturing of pharmaceutical aerosols. The large scale equipment comprises of concentrate filler, wall placer, 
purger and vacuum crimper, pressure filler and leak test tank. Now talking about concentrate filler first, production schedules decide the type of filler required and include single stage single hopper, large straight line multiple head filler or a rotary type multiple head filler. Majority of these fillers deliver a constant volume of product and can be said to give a complete fill in one or more operations. Generally, only part of the product is added at each stage assuring a more accurate fill. Now talking about wall placer. Walls can be placed over the container either manually or automatically. High speed equipment makes use of automatic wall placer which orients the wall and places it in position prior to crimping operation. Then comes purger and vacuum crimper. Aerosols are packaged in both metallic and glass containers each requiring their own style of crimper. Combination can and bottle cappers can be used for most lab procedures and operate manually or on air pressure. These are capable of producing more than 10 to 12 cans per minute. Most crimpers serve dual function that is to evacuate the air within the container to about 24 inches of mercury and then sealing the valve in place. Single head crimpers or multiple head rotary units capable of vacuum crimping up to 120 cans per minute are available. These usually require both air pressure and vacuum. Now the pressure filler. Pressure filler units are capable of adding the propellant either through the wall stem body and dip tube around the outside of the stem or under the valve cup before crimping. They are either single or multiple stage units arranged in a straight line or as a rotary unit. To speed up production, a positive pressure is used to force the liquid propellant into the container. Evacuation of air from the container, crimping the valve and addition of the propellant can be achieved in basically one operation through the use of an under the cap filler. The pressure filling unit operates in a particular fashion which involves the following steps. A seal is made by lowering the crimping belt onto the container, air is removed by vacuum and propellant is then metered into the container at room temperature and high pressure. The crimping collet expands and crimps the valve onto the opening. This unit can be fitted with 3 or 9 filling heads. Last but not the least, talking about leak test tank. This comprises of a large tank filled with water and containing heating units and a magnetized chain so that the cans for glass, aluminium and plastic containers are carried through and submerged into the water. Length of the tank is such that the temperature of the product before it comes out from the tank is 130 degree Fahrenheit. According to DOT regulations, each completed container filled for shipment must have been heated until contents reach a minimum of 130 degree Fahrenheit or attain the pressure it, it would exert at this temperature without evidence of leaking, distortion or other defects. Now we shall discuss the manufacturing procedure. Manufacture of aerosol products takes place in two stages namely manufacture of concentrate and addition of propellant. Therefore, partially manufacturing operation takes place during the filling operation. Special quality control measures are required during filling so as to ensure that both concentrate and propellant are brought together in proper proportion. This we have discussed in introduction. The aerosol concentrate is prepared as per generally accepted procedures and a sample is tested to save time and money. Rejected batch is corrected instead of discarding and thus loss of the other components is prevented. Two methods which have been developed for filling of aerosol products are pressure filling and cold filling. Now we should understand that various factors affect the choice of the method to be used. The pressure method is usually preferred over cold method because of the less danger of moisture contamination of the product, achievability of high production speeds, loss of less propellant and the method is not limited except for certain types of metering valves 
that can only be handled by the cold filling process or through use of an under the cap filler and valve crimper. Some metered valves that are pressure fillable are now available. Cold filling method on the other hand is restricted to non-aqueous products and to those products which are not adversely affected by low temperatures in the range of minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. In this method product concentrate is chilled to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit and added to the chilled container. The chilled propellant is then added in one or two stages depending on the amount. An alternating method of cold filling is to chill both the concentrate and propellant in a pressure vessel to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit and then adding their mixture to the aerosol container. A valve is then primed in place. Container passes through a heated water bath in which the contents of the container are heated to 130 degree Fahrenheit to test for leaks and strength of container. Container is air dried, spray tested if necessary, capped and labeled. This filling method is no longer used to any great extent and has been replaced by the pressure filling method. Meter dose aerosols can be filled by either of the processes. Presently, the pressure filling method is comparable in rate of production to the cold filling method. Concentrate is added to the container at room temperature and the valve is crimped in place. Propellant is added through the valve or under the cap. This step is slow and limits production. But addition of propellant around and through the valve stem using rotary filling machines and newer filling heads increases the speed. For the products which are adversely affected by air that may be trapped within the container, air in the headspace is evacuated prior to adding the propellant. Following the addition of the propellant method becomes similar to the cold filling method. Following the development of the aerosol, an initial production of about 500 to 1000 units is scheduled as per the specifications of the pharmaceutical concern. These units are used for additional stability studies and for the determination of their incompatibilities with various components of aerosol container. This run is also used to determine some of the problems that may become apparent in developing the product from laboratory to full production. A larger run of 10,000 to 25,000 units is scheduled next. All materials and equipments used are identical to those utilized for the production run. These samples can be used for clinical studies and further testing if necessary. This test run should give the information including the suitability of scale up operation, number of rejects to be expected, limitations of filling process, determination of equipment to be used and check on effectiveness and acceptability of the final product. If satisfactory results are obtained at this point, arrangements for full scale production can be made. After having discussed the manufacturing of pharmaceutical aerosols, now it is a turn to discuss quality control for pharmaceutical aerosols. First of all, quality control of propellants will be discussed. Propellants used in medicinal and pharmaceutical aerosols require special handling and in many cases special test procedures. All propellants are shipped to the user with accompanying specification sheets. However, before the propellant is used, in fact even before it is even piped into a storage tank, it is subjected to the same rigid tests which are necessary for all other raw materials. To begin with, a sample is removed and sent to the laboratory and vapor pressure of the sample is determined and compared to the specifications. When necessary, the density of the propellant is also determined as a further check. Gas chromatography is used to determine the identity of the propellant and when a blend of propellants is used to determine the composition. Last but not the least, purity and acceptability of the propellants is tested by moisture, halogen and non-volatile residue determinations. Depending on the end use of the propellant, several of these tests may be more important than others. All suppliers of propellants utilize these tests in their own labs and the tests that are to be run by user 
are generally a check on these results and more important they ensure that propellants have not become contaminated during shipment. Now the quality control of valves, actuators and dip tubes. These parts are subjected to both physical and chemical inspection and the problem is more complex than with non aerosol components because a valve is a multi component assembly comprising of various parts made to close tolerances. Examination at this point of these parts must determine whether the valves are fit to be used or not. They are sampled according to standard procedures. A manufacturer of aerosols actually assembles valves using component parts having similar tolerances to ensure that parts having minimum tolerance do not engage with parts approaching maximum tolerance. To provide the means for determining the acceptance of meter dose aerosol valves for pharmaceutical use, a suitable test method has been developed. The test determines the magnitude of the valve delivery and the degree of uniformity between the individual valves as related to the acceptance of any given lot of metered aerosol valves. The test is not designed to determine the suitability or lack of suitability of the valves for a specific formulation and application. Three test solutions were proposed to rule out variations in valve delivery brought about by different formulations. The test solutions represent the range of propellants and propellant concentrations most often used in pharmaceutical aerosols. Since a metered valve delivers a specific volume of liquid with each actuation, it was proposed that metered valve delivery should be designated in terms of valve delivery which is the volume expressed in microliters. In such a case, the test solutions recommended would apply to the control of valve delivery and uniformity for a great variety of formulations of different densities. The test solutions may be prepared in bulk and stored in hermetically sealed containers with suitable fitments for transferring the test solution into test units. Transfer of the test solution should be made in such a manner that no change occurs in the proportions of the ingredients of the test solution. Now we will be discussing the testing procedure. A representative sampling of the walls from each shipment is made according to existing methods of sampling and the test is conducted comprising of the number of steps including filling of the 25 suitable aerosol containers with specified test solution by pressure process. A button type actuator with a 0.021 inch or larger unrestricted orifice is attached. The second step involves selection of 25 valves and their placement onto these containers. Actuator button remains in place throughout the test procedure. Then the containers are placed in a suitable atmosphere at a temperature of 25 plus minus 1 degree Celsius. The product attains this temperature. Then the valve is actuated to the fullest extent for at least 2 seconds following complete dispensing of a single delivery. This procedure is repeated for a total of 10 times. Test unit is weighed to the nearest milligram. Valve is actuated to the fullest extent for at least 2 seconds following complete dispensing of a single delivery. Test unit is reweighed and difference between it and the previous weight represents the delivery in milligrams. Test procedure is repeated for a total of 2 individual deliveries from each of the 25 test units. Valve delivery per actuation in microliters is equal to individual delivery of weights in milligrams divided by the specific gravity of the test solution. Test procedure applies to two categories of metered aerosol valves having certain limits, one with the limit of plus minus 15 percent for valves delivering 54 microliter or less and the limits are plus minus 10 percent for valves delivering 55 to 200 microliters. Test procedure involves various steps. The first step involves the rejection of the valves if out of 50 individual deliveries more than or equal to 4 are outside the limits for the specified valve delivery. If 3 individual deliveries are outside the limits, another 25 valves are sampled and the test is repeated. The lot is rejected if more than one delivery is outside the specifications. 
if two deliveries from one valve are beyond the limits another 25 valves should be taken the lot is accepted if not more than one delivery is outside the specifications now the test for containers containers are sampled according to standard sampling procedures and in a manner similar to the valves both uncoated and coated metal containers must be examined for defects in the lining several quality control aspects include specifications for degree of conductivity of an electric current as a measure of the exposed metal glass containers must be examined for flaws the dimensions of the neck and other parts must be checked to determine conformity to the specifications the weight of the bottle should also be determined now the weight checking weight checking is generally accomplished by periodically adding to the filling line air empty aerosol containers which after being filled with a concentrate are removed and then accurately weighed the same procedure is used to check the weight of the propellant that is being added when a propellant blend is being used checks must be made to ensure a proper blend of propellants as a further check the finished container is weighed to check the accuracy of the filling operation now leak testing a means of checking the crimping of the valve must be available to prevent defective containers due to leakage for metal containers this is achieved by measuring the crimp dimensions and ensuring that they meet specifications final testing of the efficiency of the valve closure is accomplished by passing the filled containers through the water bath periodic checks are made of the temperature of the water bath and these results are recorded now spray testing many pharmaceutical aerosols are 100% spray tested this serves to clear the dip tube of pure propellant of pure concentrate and to check the defects in the valve and the spray pattern for metered valves it serves to prime the valve so that it is ready for use by the consumer now the testing of pharmaceutical aerosols as we know that aerosols are pressurized packages and many tests are required to ensure proper performance of the package and safety during use and storage all aerosol products that are shipped in interstate commerce are subject to the regulations of the dot these regulations impose limitations on the pressure within the container flash points flame extension and flammability the provisions of the hazardous substances labeling act and food drugs and cosmetics act must be applied pharmaceutical aerosols can be evaluated by a series of physical chemical and biological tests evaluation of pharmaceutical aerosols for physical chemical characteristics involves testing the concentrate propellant ratio identifying propellant then determination of moisture content density and vapor pressure performance evaluation includes tests for spray pattern aerosol valve discharge rate dosage with metered valve net contents foam stability particle size determination and leakage test and lastly the biological characteristics so friends in this module of pharmaceutical aerosols part 2 manufacturing we learned the requirements for manufacturing pharmaceutical aerosols and various types of apparatus for filling pharmaceutical aerosols including pressure filling apparatus cold filling apparatus and compressed gas filling apparatus after learning about these apparatus we also discussed large scale equipment for manufacturing it was followed by a discussion on the two stages of manufacturing of aerosols lastly the quality control of pharmaceutical aerosols was discussed including propellants valves actuators dip tubes containers etc and testing of pharmaceutical aerosols thank you